and welcome to this political edition of Florida by the Numbers. I'm Alex Coelho, the Director of Data and Analytics here at the Florida Chamber, here to talk about the latest happenings in the political world of Florida over the past month. Well, as the saying goes, there are decades where nothing happens, and there are weeks where decades happen. While this might be the only time Vladimir Lenin ever gets quoted on a Florida Chamber video, it certainly applies in this case. The political world is in unprecedented times, from assassination attempts to vice presidential running mate selections to a sitting president opting not to run for re-election. The last two weeks have been some of the most turbulent in American political history. How exactly this plays out, no one can really say. There is no precedent for what's happening. But here at the Florida Chamber, we'll be continuing to analyze the latest developments on how these and other events to come will be impacting the state of play in Florida elections. But as they say, the show must go on. And here in Florida, that means the Florida primaries coming up next month in August. Already, we have vote by mail ballots out to more than 2 million Floridians across the state. One of the interesting things we're watching is how vote by mail ballots have changed in regard to recent laws passed about the length of time and the way in which people request vote by mail ballots. We saw in 2020, in the COVID pandemic and in its aftermath, a significant spike in the number of vote by mail ballots Floridians requested. From about 2 million or a little over 2 million in previous elections, it nearly doubled in 2020 and maintained that in 2022. As we're heading into the 2024 primaries, we see those numbers receding back to what we saw pre-pandemic. Right now, just under 2.3 million total vote by mail ballots have been provided across the state of Florida. And while that number will go up over the coming weeks, it certainly represents a significant decline compared to 2020 and 2022. One of the other things we see is that gap in partisanship between Republicans and Democrats in terms of how many of each party request a vote by mail ballot has also gone back to a closer margin than what we saw in 2020 and 2022, where Democrats had substantial leads amongst vote by mail ballots. That gap is narrowed considerably, although part of that, of course, has to do with the changing nature of Florida voter registration, which has become more Republican in the last couple of years. One thing we'll be looking at in the primary, as well as the general, is whether or not people who requested vote-by-mail ballots in 2020 and 2022, but have yet to do so in 2024, ultimately decide to request a ballot or not. How that happens, and if that happens, will significantly impact the turnout of this upcoming election. And it's one of the many things we're monitoring closely here at the political operations team of the Florida Chamber. In addition to monitoring what's happening with votes, we're also continuing to look and find good pro-business candidates across the state. Earlier this month, we released our second round of legislative endorsements an additional 19 candidates, bringing our total to 99 endorsements. And as the election continues to unfold, further endorsements may follow. These endorsements come on the backs of a very successful candidate interview season from the Florida Chamber Political Institute, interviewing nearly 100 different candidates for legislative office across five locations around the state in May and June. For more information on the Florida Chamber Political Institute, to get more involved, please contact Executive Director Marion Johnson. And with less than four months to go until the election, we continue to monitor the latest developments in voter registration as well. We see in the month of June, Republicans continuing to march closer to the one million voter advantage over Democrats amongst active voters. At the end of June, that margin was 956,000 a 25,000 increase from just one month prior. And we expect by election day in November, that gap will have exceeded 1 million voters. 
we continue to look not just at 2024, but at the long-term picture of Florida's political landscape to identify and recruit the next generation of pro-business candidates across the state, not just for legislative office, but for the more than 2,600 elected offices up and down the ballot in Florida. We do this through our Florida Institute for Political Leadership, a training course for the next generation of pro-business candidates on how to be a successful candidate and run a successful campaign. We continue to hold classes across the state, even in the middle of an election campaign. And if you'd like more information or to get more involved in the Florida Institute for Political Leadership, please contact Andrew Wiggins. With less than four months to go until the election, the Florida Chamber's political operations team continues to ramp up its actions to help make sure that pro-business candidates are elected in Florida. And if you'd like more information on how to help make sure that happens, please contact our Executive Vice President, Frank Walker. And for any questions on the content of this video or any of the latest developments in Florida's political landscape, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at my contact information here. Again, for the Florida Chamber, I'm Alex Coelho, thanking you for helping us continue to secure Florida's future.